thanks to the new music technology, groups like Pink Floyd and Genesis and avant-garde composers like Stockhausen are today creating strange sounds which only a century ago might not even have been recognized as music. Just 11 years ago, one of the most extraordinary recitals ever was staged at the Queen Elizabeth Hall, London. The next item, Partita for Unattended Computer by Peter Zinoviev, is a true live performance in the sense that no magnetic tape is being used at all. Furthermore, the computer has a choice at various stages in the procedure, and the piece therefore comes out different every time it's played. The performance you're about to hear is therefore unique and unrepeatable. First of all, checks are made to see that the composition is correctly loaded into the computer. When these checks have been carried out, the computer is started and will carry out the performance unattended. music of the future or a case of emperor's new clothes certainly the audience if not some of the critics at that time took it all very seriously but concerts like this one have yet to catch on universally the man behind that recital is one of a new breed of musicians Peter Zinoviev is both a composer and an electronics whiz kid. A decade ago, he was already developing the hardware of synthetic music, while at the same time venturing into the uncharted music potential of computers. His synthesizers have achieved commercial success, though he would probably prefer the musical success, so far largely denied him. Today, he's converted a huge house near Oxford into a music laboratory where he explores the outer space of what he considers the music of tomorrow. Using one of his own synthesizers, he plays, records, transmutes and modifies vintage scores as data for his computer. Right. In a converted garden shed near the house are both his computer and multi-track recording equipment. Right, now, Robin, can we have, a, have the original, please? Lots of fumbles, but that's recorded. Zinoviev is intrigued by the computer because it has, in theory, the capacity to introduce into synthetic music the spontaneous, unpredictable quality of the human player. He now types instructions into the computer about how it should juggle the notes it has remembered and replay them in a semi-random fashion, speeding some up, slowing others down. On a visual display, he can see the original music data prior to being modified by the computer. All seems ready now to hand over to the computer. Right now, let's transform it. Camden High Street, London, not traditionally a mecca of music, but typical of the way the new technology of sound is enabling the more enterprising to do their own thing in every sense. This is the tiny studio of David Vorhaus, again both inventor and composer. Working at his best in the early hours of the morning, Vorhaus is developing his own approach to music. Well, 
this invention, I call the maniac. It's an analog sequencer, that's what the A stands for. The advantage of analog sequencers is that you can actually play the instrument while it's happening and see the music happening in front of you. This way it helps you compose the music because as you experiment, you come up with new ideas, often better than the original. You can take notes out, put other notes in, or bring in whole new sequences. Maniac's multiphasic means you can split it into one, two, three, or four different sequences, and they all play their riffs in counterpoint with each other. You can change the note lengths this way, or in this respect, and you can also change the pitches because. Maniac is automatically tuned digitally, chromatophonic. It's also polyphonic, but unfortunately there's no P in Maniac. If you want to change key, any or all of the sequences will change key at the same time, and you get the slower keyboard. If you just want to improvise with the skip switches, or change the note lengths, but you want a sequence to keep to some particular bar length, and you don't want to keep score, Switch in the Time Warp Navigator. Does it all for you. You can turn sequences upside down. Or back to front. Or you can get them to harmonize, add, subtract from each other. Streams of pulses that you can play with. The synthesizers have problems in that you start out with very square waves in both senses of the word. They're not nearly as interesting as, as an acoustic sound, which is always changing. Even if you hear a piano just play middle C, you look at it on an oscilloscope, there are amazing patterns happening. Whereas the synthesizer turns it out square and all the same. And it's, it's a dead sound, so you have to do an awful lot. Um, delay lines, flanges, phasers, um, mark space ratio controllers, and all sorts of things to brighten the sound up and make it interesting. It's funny how uh, our ears have become accustomed to the 12 or so different sounds of the orchestra, which through centuries of history, they filtered down to very, very fine sounds. And here we can make an infinite number of sounds. But sadly, all but the 12 uh, sound, not all but the 12, an awful lot of them just sound plain, boring electronic. And you really have to work on a sound to get it good. <laughs> Vorhaus calls his musical drain pipe with its strings of electrically conductive tape the Kaleidophon. Instead of using remote control devices, the Kaleidophon is sensitive to touch. The harder you press the strings, the louder and brighter the sound. It gives the direct response of traditional instruments. When you slide your fingers up and down, the notes don't blur into a whine, but come up clear and distinct. It makes it easier to play fast runs in tune. There are switches which give rapid repeated notes, otherwise very difficult to play by hand. The fact is, music does develop. It's uh, always done so, otherwise it would still sound like Palestrina and Monteverdi's music. Um, this this change, this development, also doesn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, the, the changes in society affect the changes in music very directly. And let's face it, for better or for worse, 
the fastest happening change now is technology, electronics. And it's just inevitable that this is going to get into the music of today and of tomorrow. Let's hope and try and make it for the better. Vorhaus switched on his Maniac sequencer to provide the backing for a live performance on his other invention, the Kaleidophon. <laughs> a tiny sample of the sounds technology now offers the musician. Are we witnessing technological self-indulgence? Or is music going through an exciting period of development? I find it reassuring to remember that this development never stops. Be it spinet, serpent, sousaphone or synthesizer, there has always been a new sound of music. However bizarre some of it may sound today, we're perhaps privileged to be witnessing this development at a time when technology is presenting a range of possibilities wider than ever before. It took some respected composers 30 years to accept the pianoforte as a serious instrument. Judged on that time scale, this revolution has hardly begun. A reminder that next week, The World on Monday can be seen at the earlier time of 8 o'clock, and it's a 90-minute special on nuclear war. Don't miss Nuclear Nightmares, next on The World on Monday, at 8 o'clock next Monday on ABC.